Hello. You are SRP, aren't you? Yes, that's me. Hello there. I'm going to do a whisper dispense for you today. What I want to do is all the same measurements that I would normally do, but with a whisper rather than uh, speaking very loud. I don't want all the neighbours to listen to what your measurements are. Okay. All right. Is this to relax me and to get more money out of me as well? Well, I'm hoping for that. <laughs> Okay. All right. So what I'll do, I'll start off with um, pupil distance measurements, mm -hmm. and I've got a couple of ways of doing that. Um, I'll start with the normal PD ruler. Now, what you'll notice today with my virtual camera, mm -hmm. you'll find that I'm going to be zooming in and zooming out as I move in to do the measurements. Okay. All right. So this is your pupil distance, and I'm measuring mono PDs, and I'm also doing binocular PDs. That's your pupil distance measurement. Now I'm going to do some of the measurements I've done in the past. I'm going to check your apical radius. I won't be doing all of the measurements because we're not doing bespoke frames. So this is the one where I measure the radius of the bridge. You can see that that one is far too big. This one a little bit too big. We're getting closer now. That one's a very good fit. Is that one a little bit tight? Yeah, it's pressing it a little. Yeah, that one's the one. So it's the apical radius is six. Right. The next one I want to. <laughs> <coughs> the next measurement I'm going to do with a spectacle frame on. Now this is a frame when you was looking at frames in the past. This is one that you liked. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd bring that one back out okay. as I'd made a note on your record before. Okay. So with this one, I want to do... Um, a pantoscopic tilt first of all so if you want to turn your head to the right and I'm going to measure now and what I'm looking at is this angle where this is where the drop is where that silver heart button is and that is at four degrees My next one, my next measurement is the back vertex. And what this measurement is, is from the front of the eye to the back of the lens. So again, if you want to turn your head to the side, I'll use a different part of this ruler for this. And that's at 11. With that particular measurement is much more crucial if your prescription is five diopters or above. Right. If um, you're tested and they find you've got more than five diopters, what they actually do is um, measure that in the test room. And we have to get, if possible, we have to get the frame fitting at the same distance. Mm -hmm. If we can't, we may have to adjust the prescription to make it equivalent to mm -hmm. the prescription that you've got. Mm -hmm. If the frame is closer to your eyes, then we may find that it's got less plus on the prescription. 
if the frame is further away from your eyes, we may have to add more plus to the prescription. Okay. Now I'm going to measure the length to bend on the side. Mm -hmm. So if you want to turn your head to the side again, this one, oh, I'm measuring from the top of your ear to the joint on the frame, and then I'm going to add three millimeters to that. And that's where we would start the drop on the frame. That's 103. That's called the length to bend. And can I ask, you can get the bifocals measured in these as well? Easily, yes. I'll okay. measure them for you as well. Yeah. I've got all that down ready that's because fine. that's what we're dispensing for you. Yes. Now what I'm going to do, the next one is the angle of drop. This is for behind your ears, so that we know what angle we can do um, to get when we adjust the frame. Okay. We like to have all this done due to the pandemic. It, we want as little um, contact with you when you collect your spectacles as possible. Mm -hmm. So if we get all the measurements done before, then um, when you come in to collect, it'll be very quickly in and out. Okay. All right, so again, if you turn your head to the side, this time I'm now measuring from the point drop over your ears. That's the perfect angle. And that's actually 40 degree angle of drop. So now that we've done the um, back vertex, the pantoscopic tilt, the length of the side and the angle of drop. <coughs> They're the only measurements that we actually need for the dispense itself mm -hmm. without the spectacle lenses. So now I'm going to measure for the um, segment height of your bifocal. Okay. Now, I know that we're doing bifocal this time and there's a re we know there's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. You want your bifocal um, segment set at your intermediate yes. rather than at your reading distance mm -hmm. because you spend a lot of time on the computer mm -hmm. and you need to see your patient mm -hmm. at the same time and you're spending a lot less time doing actual writing yes. or reading. That's what I mean, yes. So, because these are your work glasses, that's the reason I'll do the way I'm doing it. Okay. All right. So now I'm just going to measure for the segment height, which is level with your lower canthus, which is your bottom lid, down to the bottom of the frame. And I get that as 12 millimeters. And I'll do the same now on the other side. This will also tell me if the frame is slightly out. It's not, that's 12. Perfect. And the perfect size bifocal for your usage is the D28 segment, which makes it look like an upside down D. Mm. The official name for that is called the S segment if it's in a glass lens. And it's a D segment in a plastic lens. I never knew that. So this is more to do with defining what lens is used. We could also do a curve top, which is very similar to your D segment, but instead of being very flat at the top, it's slightly curved. Okay. What, what's it, There's less lens? what they call jump in the lens. If you've got the jump in the lens, that means if we had a semicircle and it said one, two, three, four, five, six, when you put the bifocal on, if it's a D segment, your distance you'll look at one, two, three, but then it'll jump when you look in the bifocal, it immediately goes to five, six, seven. Oh. So you'd miss the four. Oh, so you you wouldn't notice that you've missed that. It's only a small amount. You're only talking of about a millimetre. But that's called the jump. Right. 
when you have the C segment, you'll still see the number four. Your um, optical center for the bifocal is right close to the top of the D segment. So if we said that's your D segment there, mm -hmm. it would be there, but the lens fades in from the, it's only half of the circle. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be a gradual change. With a round segment, it changes gradually to the maximum near vision centre. Right. All right. But the D is going to be better for me on the computer. Yeah, we, I feel it is. Okay. Um, we've tried the S segment before. We've tried the, uh, the um, curved top before mm -hmm. and we've tried the round segment and you've always found the mm -hmm. T segment better. Is the D better because it's slightly wider? At the top of it is, yes. Right. It's called 28 segment and if you was to measure it from the top you'd probably find it measures more like 26 because the cutoff isn't dead centre because that's where the optical centre is of the lens. Mm -hmm of the segment and the lens so it's actually slightly higher than that and as you know on a circle as you go higher it started to come back in a bit mm -hmm. okay all right yeah thank you so we'll get these spectacles made for you and then we'll do a collection appointment at a later date okay thank you thank you